Larson, your leader for the final time in one. In May, Kyle Larson didn't even get to turn a lap here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He has come back, and he looks like he may be headed to victory lane. One lap car to get around. That's Daniel Suarez. Larson for the final time out of turn three. And he has tried to join Chase Elliott as a two-time winner of the race here at the Roval. Daniel Suarez roars it out of turn number four with Kyle Larson giving chase now as they climb the hill up turn number five. But Christopher Bell not able to gain on it here. They come through the turn five and turn six area around Redneck Hill one last time. Kyle Larson looks to the inside of the lap machine of Daniel Suarez here on the final lap. Gets on the brakes easily there. Gets around the Suarez machine with Bell still trying to chase. See, Bell has actually closed the gap now. It's just about ten car lengths, but there is a machine between the two. Daniel Suarez will move right up to the back bumper of Kyle Larson. And once again, Larson is off turn nine. Just just as uh, Seabell is entering that turn. Here he comes for the final time today, perhaps as he takes the number five down to the left-hand side of the chicane. Now back over to the right, down through the gearbox, now back up the gearbox. Here comes Kyle Larson, drives it up hard on the turn number 13. We'll get halfway home here to turn 14. Kyle Larson on his way. It's a victorious day for Kyle Larson. He will advance to the round of eight, and he will become a two-time winner of the Bank of America Roval 400 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway as he bests Christopher Bell by 10 car lengths back to the start finish line. A great day for Kyle Larson. It was a great day to be Kyle Larson as he wins for the second time the Bank of America Roval 400. He is in studio with myself and Alexis Erickson. Kyle, I won't lie, one of the biggest treats we get to do is twice a year play the winning lap for the winning driver. This is the second time you've got to hear yourself win the Roval. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. No, it was a, a great, great day for us. Um, a difficult racetrack, um, as it always is for for myself here. So it was nice to have a good balanced race car and, and allow me to be consistent and, and be fast. So was proud of everybody at Hendrick Motorsports and um, great result. You haven't really minced words about how this track has um, not been kind to you, except for that one other win that you have here uh, recently. What is it about either the new layout or just your car today that, you know, was able to carry you to the victory? Yeah, um, you know, the the new layout probably helped because, um, you know, the last two next gen races I've crashed in the old layout. So or in that old section. Um, but, yeah, I think in general, my car was just much more comfortable. Um I feel like since we came to the next gen stuff, I just, I don't know. I just haven't felt like comfortable. I just feel like I'm on the edge of crashing all the time and, and I eventually do crash. Um, but this weekend I, I still felt, you know, at times like you could crash, but I felt way more like the window of opportunity was way larger. So, um, yeah, proud of the team for building a, a better setup for us. And, um, yeah, we could go out there and contend for win. Kyle, we were watching the race unfold, and right below our broadcast position, we're right above start-finish line, watching you come through the chicane, which is pretty tricky, a little trickier than it was. It seems like you were almost like gliding, and I saw a lot of other folks come through, and their butts hanging out, and they're wiggling all over the place. Talk about that sense of car control you have. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of it comes to the balance of your car, and, and my car was was balanced well. I think, too, being in the lead group um you can kind of flow a little bit nicer and you're not re really like max pushing you know every section of the racetrack so you know in turn that that keeps your tires cooler and, and kind of just you know compounds positively for you to be better throughout the long run as people other people get their tires hot and start fading um you, know, you can you can still have some grip so yeah there was times i got through the front stretch it came really good i was like oh that felt great and then you come back the next time you're like man i just barely missed it now i i feel like i gave up a lot of time so it's just a, a really tough track like i said and um especially the the front stretch chicane and the back stretch chicane for me and you mentioned this car and and feeling on the edge of out of control a lot and and i know you had also mentioned doing more sim for this race than maybe you normally do for other races just talk about like what that is like when you have to prepare for a race, then you come in, you have such a short amount of time. There was a bit of an extended practice this weekend, but still such a short amount of time to get comfortable in the car and, and, and get it to where you need it to be during a weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, throughout my career, I, I haven't been one that this simulator has really like translated well to. So I've kind of stayed away from it. Like I, I don't, I can't use it as a tool for myself, um, to get better. Um, but, you know, this week, um, you know, like I said, I've been so bad.
bad here that I was like, you know what, I have to try something. And um, and two, so I ran, I had to do like a post. Uh, so the only time that I really go in the sim is to do like a post race deal to kind of try and help, Maybe. you know, correlate the the sim to real life. And, and I like doing those because I feel like I'm helping, you know, get it better and all that. But as far as like using it as a tool, I haven't been able to do that. But at the end of the session, I was like, hey, can you guys plug in the Roval? I just want to try it. And um, yeah, it felt closer to real um, to what I remember to last year. So I was like, all right, cool. So um, you know, I spent a few hours in it this week and, and we got to throw different you know setups in it. And, and you know, the, I could feel a difference. Um, so then, yeah, I think that gave the team a good direction on on what to look for in their setup for this week. Um, gave me a, a good direction of of what I want to try and feel. Um, and then, yeah, then it matched up in real life, and and we were we were really good. Kyle, at some point in the race, I'm not exactly what lap sure exactly what lap it was on. You clinched, and you knew you were in the round of eight. Did that change? your driving style at all were you able to loosen up and go okay I'm, I'm home free here for this race yeah not really because i already felt pretty comfortable about it you know we had a 50 something point lead on the gap or on the cut line and there would have had to be some crazy stuff happen for us to to miss it so you know i i didn't uh it didn't change my mindset once i heard that um you know it's obviously nice but uh it we we were already our our bed was made in the strategy that we were in or on. Right. So like, I was just like, okay, you know, great. Now let's go, let's go try and execute some good restarts and, and try and get a win. You know, earlier in the show, we talked about the fact that when we were here in May, you know, obviously things didn't go the way you wanted to with the rain delay and coming from Indy, not being able to be in that race. You come back, you, you know, you put yourself in your team in victory lane. Not only that, but you also get redemption at Indy by going and winning the Brickyard. How does that feel? I mean, just from where you felt that night in May, um, you know, and I know that was, you know, a rough day for you to then being able to go back and claim victory at both of those racetracks later on in the, in the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so it's not something I think about, um, you know, like leading into the Brickyard. I didn't think about, you know, winning there and how it's going to feel like redemption or coming here to the Roval and, and winning and that's going to feel like some sort of redemption. But after you do it, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, I mean, that's kind of cool, right? Like, you know, maybe it was just fate, <laughs> I guess, to, to win. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I try to move on from things and, and uh, you yeah, know, I felt like, yeah, I I wanted to move on from uh from the the crappy feeling that I had um here in May. Well, glad you were able to do that. I feel like you've paid it off. Like Alexis yeah. said, that's amazing. It was going to be my question. You went back to Indy, you won, and with the paint scheme, you were supposed to race here, and then you cap it off with the Roval. I noticed after the race today, when you pull around and you do your victory celebration, there's a lot of people mm -hmm. sticking around to cheer and yell for Kyle Larson. How does, how does that make you feel? I mean, it, it, that you're easily one of the top two most popular guys in this game. Do you appreciate the fandom? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent for sure. And, and, uh, I feel like this year, you know, running, getting to run the Indy 500 has really kind of helped, um, you know, my, my name and brand, uh, even more. Um, but yeah, I think winning to me, winning here at Charlotte, yeah, it's great for the fans, but you know, winning here at home with your team and, and the mechanics, you know, wives and kids and, you know, for myself, you know, Hendrick Automotive Group also is, is this is their home Four race. Four miles away from here. So yeah, we had tons of people here today and, um, you know, it's just fun to kind of see their reactions and, and all that and, and see the, the joy. Um, there's so much sacrifice that the mechanics have to make, um, to be on a cup series team, but especially the five team. Um, so, you know, for them to get to have their families here and get, you know, for us to be lucky enough to win today and, and celebrate with their kids and stuff like that's what makes me feel extra special, but for sure the fan, the fans are, are great. And, uh, I do feel like I've got a lot of fans out there and, and I love that support. So big picture round one, you go out, you win Bristol, you get to the next round round two, you go out, you win get to the next round are we going to see you win martinsville are you going to go out and dominate martinsville and get your way into the final four well i would love to win before martinsville. Um, but uh i don't know i mean you know i i really just hope yes we've won a race in these first two rounds but 
they haven't been easy. Like, you know, we started off the playoffs at the DNF at Atlanta and, and, you know, we were only like 15 points above the cut line in round one after the first race. So that was nerve wracking. And then Kansas, pretty much same thing. You know, we had a flat tire early and got damaged and just kind of had to ride around all day and left there not far above the cut line. So yeah, I've had to deal with a lot of stress after the first race of each round. And and I would hope you know, going to Vegas next week, we can just have a clean day, get a lot of you know stage points, get a win would be amazing. But if not, you know, just have a solid day. And then just kind of build on that, and, and hopefully, you know, before we go to Martinsville, we'll have a, a point gap similar to what we, we had to today. So PR and broadcast the Vegas race. It's our last of the year. How does Kyle Larson marry up to the track out in the desert? Yeah, um, it's probably our best track um, for the five team. I mean, I'm, I'm sure results probably would agree with that. Um, yeah, we've won three times since I've been in the five car. I think we finished second two or three other times. We've led tons of laps. Uh, we've won the last two two races there. So I would I would love to go there and, and three-peat and, and lock our way into Phoenix, but um, it's never that easy. So uh, we'll just try and uh, bring another fast tindercars.com Chevy there and, and see if we can, you know, have a good day. Last question. You've got a lot of really cool hardware on that. I think you <laughs> just got in victory lane. Yeah. So you've got a really big ring and I think that watch too. And we've got a huge trophy here and you get like a blue jacket. Like how does, how does the celebration in Charlotte compare, you know, to everywhere else? Yeah. I was telling Marcus up there. Um, I love winning at this racetrack because, you know, it's at home, but you get, extra stuff you do. <laughs> you, like most races you win you just get the trophy which yep. is great you know all the trophies in, in nascar are awesome but like you come to charlotte get a ring yep you get a watch yep. you get the jacket like um it's cool they had a they had a sick uh trophy for the manufacturer too so like even the manufacturer gets a trophy like it's just uh they make this place special and and i appreciate that i know any driver whoever wins here appreciates the the extraness of winning here so um, yeah, thankful for Marcus and whatever, what everything that he does for the sport, and um, yeah, hope we can keep winning here. Well, I know he thinks work. a lot about you, by the way. I've, I've I've heard him say that. Well, congratulations on all the extra swag you picked up for winning the Bank of America Roval 400, and good luck. You got four more races to go grab that second title. How, I, last thing, I know you said last thing. Last thing, <laughs> you got a real good opportunity to be a two-time Cup champion. Ten years ago, were you thinking about that? Uh, no, <laughs> no, not at all, really. Um, you know, ten years ago, yeah, I mean, maybe you hope that you could win a championship, but then once you get in, because I, mean, I only started like ten years ago, so yeah. once you get in and realize how difficult it is, you're like, man, I would just love to win one. But uh, since joining Hendrick, um, yeah, I'm I'm super happy and grateful to win one. But once you win one, and we finished second last year, it makes you hungry to win more. So. It is so tough, though, in this format to uh, to win consistently and, and win multiple championships. So um, I know I've got the team to do it, though, and, and uh, yeah, we're working hard to, to get that done. And, yeah, we'll try and get through these next three and, and see if we can get it done at Phoenix. Well, you put on a clinic today. Congratulations being a two-time winner of the Bank of America Roval 400. Way to go. Yep, thank you.